Angela, I'd like you to introduce yourself and talk about what you do. Mm -hmm. And then, um, um, first see what your opinions are just on marriage in general, if you have any personal experience with that. And then what are your ideas about gay marriage specifically? Gonna be here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> just warning you. My name is Kay Crow. I am a, a licensed professional counselor and I'm an ASECT certified sex therapist. I've been in practice for 22 years. Um, in terms of my personal experience with, with marriage, um, I made a conscious decision when I was about nine or 10 years old that I never wanted to be married. There wasn't any event that made you mm -mm. feel like you didn't want to get married, it was just watching your own parents. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and knowing you know, without going into into too much detail about it, just knowing that they were both very unhappy, and yet they stayed out of a sense of obligation. Mm -hmm. And you know, those are my per perceptions as a nine or ten year old. And I have since talked to both of them about that. They finally did divorce when I was in college, but it was years overdue. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and my mom, my mom telling me, well, I stayed, stayed with your dad because of the kids, and um, you know, I didn't think I could do it on my own. Mm -hmm. she, she certainly could have, because she was. <laughs> Marriage to me has, uh, has, even though so many people in our culture kind of aspire to it, like, oh, I just can't wait for that day. And I've never been able to relate to that, never picking out the dress. And, Come on, there's just so much more to life to me than that. Has your avoidance of marriage ever gotten in the way of a relationship? Um, yes. Um, when I first got, went to college, I met a young man who, uh, from high school on, knew that he wanted to be a pilot in the Air Force. He was basically looking for, he wanted to be married by the time he left college and then start his career. And, you know, he was very open about that, what he wanted. And he was kind of hinting around, you know, that I could be part of that. And I just couldn't picture myself in the whole Air Force thing. I mean, <laughs> my God, um, it's just so regimented. It had a lot more to do with that than marriage. Mm -hmm. But marriage was certainly part of it. And, um, yeah, there have been guys who, you know, you wouldn't even consider marriage, and I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> nope. And so we, you know, we just didn't date. Um, gay marriage. Well, um, you know, ever since this topic, what was the big um, push? Was it 2002? No nonsense in November. I remember. I think that was 2002. Here? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or no, it was the it was the big federal amendment. Uh -huh. They were uh, wanting to put in place a federal amendment um, I don't remember. against against same sex people marrying. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And um, so there was a big push. The ladies who lunch and uh, the Stonewall Democrats and. You know, so just talking to people, it was really interesting because there was such a varied sense. Uh, at least among the, the gay and lesbian population, some people were like, well, yeah, I think it, it's, it's, it's like equal rights for everybody, um, but I don't think I'll take advantage of it. You know, I just want to know I have that option mm -hmm. if it's there. Whereas there were other people who had been in long-term relationships and hit on situations where being married would have made a night and day difference in what had happened. Um, you know, just like my, my friends, you know, one of them had the twin boys, and if they were married, they wouldn't have had to go through the whole rigmarole of adoption. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I agree with it. I think it should be available to everybody. I don't think it has anything to do with, you know, we're way beyond the arguments about homosexuality being pathological. Right. It's like, okay, uh, that was 30 years ago, mm -hmm. you know. They took it out of the Diagnostic and Statistical <coughs> Manual in 72. Right. 
And you want to talk about an interesting story, the way that that happened. It's really fascinating. It's an it's a integral part of gay history, but it well, doesn't get a whole lot of attention. I don't remember the story. But, I mean, it was, it was extremely timely at the, at the same, in, the, in the same breath. But just like in, you know, they're, they're comparing a lot of the gay rights movement to the racial movements, right. the civil rights movement. And I think it's going to happen in similar ways, but for different reasons. Equal rights, one at a time, like the non-discrimination laws written into federal uh, federal amendments, and then the right to marry, and then um, you know the national hate crimes. Right now, it's all state by state. You know, the fact that there's such a disparity tells me that okay, this is you know this is a huge issue to to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They're very threatened by the idea that people can have relationships outside of what is considered. Um, Normal, and that is one of my my least favorite words, yeah. because normal is like. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> that takes me back to one of the DVDs that I show in my in my class when we're talking about both sexual orientation and gender, is that biology loves diversity. Variation is the norm. Hmm. But society, biology loves diversity, but society hates it. Because society wants to pigeonhole people and wants what they consider to be a sense of order. It's too out of control for diversity. Yeah. To have diversity. Mm -hmm. Too complicated. Yeah, but we can't deny our biology. What has been a stereotype of gay people is that their lives are all about sex. Mm -hmm. Or their, their sexual orientation is all about sex. Mm -hmm. When we, as we understand sexual orientation, it's not about, it's not all about sex. Mm -hmm. It's about who you connect with psychologically. Who defines normal. Right. You know, I don't think there really is a normal. No. I mean, how many times have we heard someone who's in the sunset years of their lives say, I don't know what the world is coming to. It's mm -hmm. all going to hell in a handbasket. It's going, everything's crazy. But it's because of what they think is normative mm -hmm. and normal. And the, the world is, I think that in a, in a sense, the world is starting to reflect the level of diversity that's always been there.